In a traditional classroom, teachers ask for students to volunteer answers to questions by raising their hands. Typically, low-achieving students do not volunteer in these situations, and without the opportunity to respond and review, they fall farther behind, leading to passive, inactive learning. Students with disabilities have many additional barriers to education that make it difficult for them to learn in a traditional classroom if their needs are not addressed. Moreover, if they are not actively engaged in the class, they are likely to participate in off-task behavior. This may be especially difficult for students with disabilities, including those with ADHD or emotional and behavioral disorders. Teachers can help make learning more attainable for students with disabilities by using evidence-based questioning techniques that are proven through research to have a positive impact on students with diverse educational needs. Numbered Heads Together, or NHT, is one evidence-based practice that has been shown to increase active engagement, social skills, peer cooperation, and test scores. In Numbered Heads Together, the teacher divides students into small heterogeneous groups and assigns numbers to each student. The teacher then asks a question and the group must discuss the answer, making sure that each student in the group understands the answer. The teacher then randomly chooses a number, and all students with that number, one from every group, must provide the answer. Numbered Heads Together was developed by Spencer Kagan and his colleagues. It is one of many instructional techniques that they developed to encourage cooperative learning. Cooperative learning is a type of peer-mediated instruction in which students participate in face-to-face -face interdependent activities, practice individual accountability, and engage in group processing and evaluation. Numbered Heads Together encourages social skills and ensures that all students are participating equally and actively. Numbered Heads Together can be used as a Tier 1 intervention in the Response to Intervention Framework to facilitate learning by students with disabilities in the general education classroom. Numbered Heads Together also functions well in a secondary instruction and in diverse subjects. The technique can be applied to a variety of question types, from factual questions to math problems to compare and contrast prompts to analyzing and summarizing questions. It can also be used at different stages in a lesson to activate previous knowledge, to maintain student engagement, or to review what was learned. NHT is especially effective for students with disabilities because these students benefit from massed practice or multiple opportunities to respond and NHT ensures that every student is participating and responding. The social interactions are also beneficial to students with social disabilities, and the act of participation benefits students with behavioral disabilities. Several studies have provided support for the use of numbered heads together in the classroom. The majority of studies have been small group case studies, but the research consistently shows improved on-task behavior and academic achievement following NHT implementation. In 1991, Mahidi et al. compared the effects of NHT and whole group question and answer, or WGQ&A, on a third grade social studies class. They found that weekly quiz scores improved about two letter grades when NHT was implemented. The study was repeated in 2002 with a sixth grade science class, and similar results were found. In 2010, Hayden et al. applied NHT to a 6th grade language arts class and studied how three students with disabilities, including ADHD, mild intellectual disability, and emotional behavioral disorder, responded to this method. NHT was used to review their comprehension, comprehension of nonfiction passages, and it was compared against traditional hand raising. The use of incentives, in addition to NHT, which is called NHT plus one, was also studied. On-task behavior was monitored and measured, and quiz grades following NHT were collected. The results showed an increase in on-task behavior and an average 27% grade increase from those students when NHT and NHT plus 1 were used, compared to baseline methods. Hunter and Hayden conducted a similar study of four students with disabilities in a middle school math class over two months. They found an increase in quiz scores and on-task behavior measurements when NHT plus one and NHT were used, compared to the baseline. They also found a significant increase in those measures when NHT plus one was used over NHT alone. These studies suggested that NHT works well because it provides students with longer wait time and more opportunities to respond. 
students in a group are also more likely to hear correct answers than if they are working alone. Moreover, the interdependent nature of this model encourages students to be invested in answering the question correctly. There are several variations on the heads together technique, but they generally follow the same format. If a teacher wishes to use heads together for questioning students, they can follow these steps. Step 1 is expectations and rules. First, the teacher must explain to the students how heads together works. The teacher must provide clear instructions and rules, as well as behavioral expectations, such as respect all opinions. Providing these guidelines in advance will help the students through the task and will help prevent off-task behavior. Step 2 is grouping students. The teacher will then direct the students into groups of three or four. The group should be heterogeneous in academic achievement. An ideal group will have one high, one average, and one low-performing student. Each student within a group will be assigned a number from 1 to 3 or 4. So if there are three groups of four students, there will be three students with the number 1 and three students with the number 2, etc. If a group falls short of the four students needed, one student may be assigned more than one number. Step 3. Question. The teacher poses a question to the students and asks them to put your heads together. Step 4 is group discussion. The next step is where methods vary. Essentially, students discuss the question within their group and make sure that everybody in the group can answer it. In a variation on heads together, students are provided with dry erase boards. They must independently write an answer on their boards and hold them facing their stomachs to signal that they are ready. When all students within a group are in this position, they turn around their boards, discuss the answers, and attempt to agree on a final answer. Step 5. Numbered Responses when students are finished discussing among their groups, or when an allotted time has elapsed, the teacher announces a number from 1 to 3 or 4. Every student with that number, one from each group, will stand and provide their answers. If dry erase boards are being used, they can display their answers. Step 6. Feedback. The teacher asks the other students if they agree with the provided answers. The teacher provides feedback and corrections when needed. Step 7. Repeat. The teacher asks another question and repeats the discussion, response, and feedback loop. The next step is incentives. Some methods also include the use of incentives to bolster the positive impacts of numbered heads together. Incentives may be rewards such as raffle tickets that can be exchanged for healthy snacks, free time with computers or board games, or educational rewards such as pencils and erasers. Items such as raffle tickets may be provided to students who meet certain criteria during Heads Together, such as exhibiting cooperative behavior. I will now model numbered heads together in a simulated library lesson. The lesson will guide 8th grade students before a science project in which they must find an article about problems facing the ecosystem. The following lesson will take place after students have read an article about deserts and deforestation, and after we have reviewed the CARP test for evaluating information. Now that we have all read the article, I would like to apply the CARP test to the article to evaluate it. Remember, the CARP test is a list of questions that we can ask about a source to determine the source's currency, authority, accuracy, relevance, and purpose. Please, will you repeat these words with me right now? Currency, authority, accuracy, relevance, and purpose. One more time. Currency, authority, accuracy, relevance, and purpose. Fantastic. So we use the CARP test to determine if an article or a source is reliable and relevant. It's important to know how to do this because there's a lot of information out there on the internet, in the news, in the media, and sometimes the information is reliable, but sometimes it's biased or misinformed or sometimes simply not true. So the CARP test helps us to identify bias and misinformation and determine if an article or source is reliable and relevant. So to evaluate this article, we will use an activity called Numbered Heads Together. In Numbered Heads Together, we will discuss the question from the CARP test in a small group, and then we will share, the que uh, share our answers to the question as a class. Everybody is in a group of about four right now, so I will assign you a number from one to four, 
Please write down that number on the top of your paper so you don't forget it. Over here, we have one, two, three, four. Over there, we have one, two, three, four. And in this group, we have one, two, and Peter, will you be numbers three and four for your group? Thank you. So I will ask you a question from the CARP test, and I will tell you to put your heads together and discuss the answer to the question as a small group. Please remember to respect your peers' opinions, even if you disagree with them, and please make sure that everybody in your group can answer the question. You will discuss the answer for about one or two minutes, and then I will tell you to stop your small group discussions, and I will call out a number from one to four. Anybody with that number will rise and answer the question for their group. So let's start off with a practice round. Uh, I'll start with an easier question. When was the information published or posted? This will help us determine the currency of the article. Can everybody repeat that question with me? When was the information published or posted? Okay, everybody please turn to your peers in your group and discuss that question for about one or two minutes. Great, you all seem to have arrived at an answer to the question, when was this article published or posted? I will now ask you to share your answers with the class using numbered heads together. So will everybody who is assigned to the number two please stand now? So if you have the number two, please stand now. Okay, great. So Alexa, can you tell me what your group agreed on as the answer to the question, when was the information published or posted? Fantastic, okay. Uh, Russell, can you tell me what your group agreed on as the answer to this question? Great, and Jay, what was your group's answer? Fantastic, okay, so we can all agree that this article was published in 2006. So now we'll move on to a question that may require a little bit more discussion. You might have some disagreement within your group, that's okay. Uh, this question is, is the information current or out of date for your topic? Will everybody please repeat this question with me out loud? Is the information current or out of date for your topic? Fantastic. Please put your heads together and discuss this question within your group for one to two minutes. Numbered Heads Together is a tool that you can add to your evidence-based practice toolbox to help meet the needs of students with disabilities and to create a more productive classroom experience for all.